Do you, do you have anything from Prabhupada's writing on the Golden Age of Kali? Me, Narayan Prabhu? No. Yeah. No. Okay, so we're live now um, on Facebook and YouTube. So, Jai. So, we can officially start now. Okay. Jai. So, um, how should we start? Uh, well, uh, can we start from a Bhagavatam verse? Narayan Prabhu talks about Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas, then we branch off from there. Definitely. Okay. So, I was reading this wonderful verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Where is it? Okay. One second. Let me load it up. It was it was very uh and kindly enlighten us if this was written by Srila Prabhupada or if his disciples did it. I'm just trying I don't actually remember if this was written by Srila Prabhupada or not, but it might be that well hopefully because we don't want uh, yeah. anything that is less this part right, right here this is Srimad Bhagavatam uh, what is it it is 10 to 31 so 10 to 31 this, this is a, uh, this is the translation goes um, Shreya Prabhu can you read this definitely all right um, oh lord who resemble the shining sun, you are always ready to fulfill the desire of your devotee. And therefore, you are known as a desire tree, Vancha Kalpataru. When Acharyas completely take shelter under your lotus feet in order to cross the fierce ocean of nascents, nascents, they leave behind on earth the method by which they cross. And because you are very merciful to your other devotees, you accept this method to help them. Okay. Now, how about the purport also, please? Okay. Purport. This statement reveals how the merciful Acharyas and the merciful Supreme Personality of Godhead together help the serious devotee who wants to return home, back to Godhead. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his teachings to Rupa Goswami said, Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavan Jeeva Guru Krishna Prasade Paya Bhakti Lata I am not sure Late Bija. Okay. Yes. One can achieve the seed of Bhakti Lata devotional service by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. The duty of the Guru is to find the means according to the time, the circumstances and the candidate by which one can be induced to render devotional service, which Krishna accepts from a candidate who wants to be successful in going back home, back to Godhead. After wandering throughout the universe, a fortunate person within this material world seeks shelter of such a guru or acharya who trains the devotee in the suitable ways to render service according to the circumstances so that the supreme personality of godhead will accept and serve accept the service this makes it easier for the candidate to reach the ultimate destination the acharya's duty therefore is to find the means by which Devotees may render service according to references from Shastra. Rupa Goswami, for example, in order to help subsequent devotees, published such devotional books as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Thus, it is the duty of the Acharya to publish books that will help future candidates take up the method of service and become eligible to return home, back to Godhead, by the mercy of the Lord. In our Krishna consciousness movement, this same path is being prescribed and followed. Thus, the devotees have been advised to refrain from four sinful activities, illicit, illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating and gambling, and to chant 16 rounds a day. These are bona fide instructions. 
because in the western countries constant chanting is not possible one should not artificially imitate haridas atakura but should follow this method krishna will accept a devotee who strictly follows the regulative principles and the method prescribed in the various books and literatures published by the authorities the acharya gives the suitable method for crossing the ocean of nisains by accepting the boat of the lord's lotus feet and if this method is strictly followed the followers will ultimately reach the destination by the grace of the god by the grace of the lord this method is called acharya sampradaya it is therefore said sampradaya vihinaye mantraste nishfala mataha pad in the padma purana the acharya sampradaya is strictly bona fide therefore one must accept the acharya sampradaya otherwise one's endeavor will be futile shri shrila narottama dasa thakura thakura therefore sings thandera charana sevi bhakta sane vasa janame janame haya e abhilasha one must worship the lotus feet of the acharya and live within the society of devotees then one's endeavor to cross over nisains will surely be successful is this right. word said nisains is that how you say it yes okay guys wonderful reading prabhu's <laughs> very excellent hey bol Jai, Jai Mahaprabhu, Prabhu. Ah, Mahaprabhu. So, so which which canto? Is this the tenth canto? Which which chapters? Tenth Ch- canto, chapter two, verse thirty-one. Yes. Ten to thirty-one. So I understand your concern. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 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 just trying to see. Does well, it that should be possible because Shri Prabhupada was doing the Shri Bhagavatam on his. just before he entered samadhi right. so which which verse he did uh should be clarifying but it's pretty early i i was illustrating the 10th canto right. 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 in uh, 1980 ha huh. but some of had already done the you see the, we were way behind shrila prabhupada in terms of producing the uh books mm-hmm. yeah, i could keep up with the illustrations uh because we had the un- semi edited or unedited te- text but there was the sanskrit work and all that other stuff that had to be done and as a result books were not being published but the, everything was ready to publish there were stacks and stacks uh probably you know in the end probably close to 10 books we were 10 books ahead of the publication because we didn't have the sanskrit person to help us so there's some very important points here uh shila prabhupada uses the word acharya numerous times in acharya sampradaya and uh, and the word guru is also used so you, we can see that the word guru in this context is referring to the acharya right well yeah the duty of the well, well there's two, there's two factors the guru and the acharya the right. acharya is in the sampradaya right the guru can be whatever you know but is if you're not interested in uttamada kare even uttamada kare guru may or may not be an acharya ah so an uttamada kare guru might not be an acharya acharya ah. no hmm. no because the acharya is in the sampradaya is specifically representing the sampradaya supposing you have a person in the sampradaya like bhakti sarant saraswati thakur right and suppose he had 20 disciples equal to shrila prabhupada not all of them would be in that not all of them would be representing the sampradaya only the one that is the sampradaya acharya would be representing we're we're so used to prabhupad being the only one which he was to right. come up with the sadanta saraswati thakur's enclave out of his ashram that uh 
that we don't realize that um, what it would have been like if there had been other pure devotees. But as it was, everybody was just very anxious to cling to their temple because they figured if they left and went to America, somebody might take their temple away from them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So they said even Narad, not Narad, but um, Puri Maharaj, the elder, the younger Puri Maharaj, said, I have to take care of my institution, you know. He would say like that to Prabhupada, why he could not come to America. But they were very worried that if they left, the, that someone would take it over, then they came back, it would be out in the street. Mm. Wow. Because they all got their temples by not, not having an elected GBC. Actually, they didn't have an unelected GBC. Mm -hmm. You can see, it's gone with an unelected GBC, is so much luckier than the Gaudiya Mouth with no GVC. Our unelected GVC has the distinct benefit of having kept the movement from splitting into fragments, which it would have done with all the big shots wanting to be big shots of their own temples or own zones. Because as it was, there could have been one of the uh, Ritvik, so-called Ritviks could have, if they had bro broken the movement into pieces, he could take 10 temples. Right. Them all would have been glad to take Radha Damodar and 100 temples, you know. So they would all take it. But it's somehow Prabhupada tricked and lured them into working together. Right, right. And knew that they would declare themselves to be a church, to be I mean, successors, it, successors it, to Prabhupada. So he let them do that so that the movement would stay together so that we could create the uh, League for 10,000 years and sort of sort it all out now. Yeah, I mean, it seems like when the gurus were deviating from you know, the Vaishnava standards, still then the, the so-called unelected GVC, they were doing damage control, meaning that they were still trying to keep the movement together one way or another, even though they weren't unelected and Bhavanam oh, was called... Yeah, well, they they had that choice, and I'm sure Tamal pondered day and night on whether it would be better to grab a big chunk and keep it for himself and be the Acharya of that chunk, or whether to keep it all together and maybe become the Acharya of the whole, successor Acharya of the whole movement. <laughs> wow. And, and when he had that lofty desire, Jayapataka Swami arranged for Tamal to be assassinated, and he eliminated the competition. Oh, wow. Yeah, JPS paid a taxi cab driver who was driving Tamal and a male and female devotee couple in the back seat in a car in Mayapur. And uh -huh. Tamal was on the left side and the woman of the couple was on the left side. And of course, in India, the cars drive on the right. So uh -huh. he slammed the, the ta he drive cab. On the, drive on the left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Reverse it. So Tamal was on the right and the woman in the backseat was on the right. The, um, the no, cab. No, he... Wait, wait. This is a small point. You're on a good roll. The driver was on the right. Tamal was next to the driver and the man yeah. and woman were in the backseat. There might right. have been three in the backseat. I don't remember. So he slammed the car into a tree um, and the whole left side of the car died. Tamal was, uh, his head was chopped off by the windshield. And the woman died from internal hemorrhaging. And the entire side lived, the, the man and the driver. And the driver, to this day, is living on very high means, which he got for, by being paid off by Jai Pataka. Wow. These people are really something, huh? They're like mafia type of people who kill each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there have been many uh, suicides in Mayapur. People that he doesn't like end up fa being found hanging from a rope in their rooms. Right. Right. Wow. Wow. They also killed Ayendra Swami. They, they burned him to death. His, his, his room exploded because they planted a bomb there and he was burnt to a crisp. Wow. Yeah. These, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like horrific though. What do these people do just to get some temporary position? You know, it's like unthinkable, like killing. Oh, are you sure it's unthinkable? 
look at the history of Europe and England and France. That's exactly what they they did for a thousand, couple of thousand years. Yeah, at least for me, it's very unthinkable to you know take someone's life and you know. I mean, wow. Well, yeah. It all depends on what's at stake. What's at stake? The material body is yeah. at stake. People, no. people, people, when people, you know, like in England, they had an uncle that was like Sir somebody or other, a nobleman with big land and everything. A nephew could murder his uncle just because he wanted to get a bigger inheritance. Wow. This yeah. is going on. This has been going on in the West all the time. And it has also gone on, you know, in the time of Genghis Khan. And it's also gone on in the lower levels of Indian monarchy as well. As soon as you have power, you know, Prabhupada said about power, power corrupts, power, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Wow. So the gurus and monarchs wanted absolute power. Huh. Yeah, if you look at the history of Egypt, it's really mind-boggling who murdered who, all the pharaohs kill, killing, being killed and killing others, and stuff like that. Why? Because they had absolute power. If you have absolute power, who doesn't want to take that away and be have that same absolute power? So, um, so now we're coming back to twenty twenty one. Now uh, we're here. Um, these initiators and the false acharyas, successors, or whatever you call it. No, 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 not acharyas. No, they I said false. Kanisha initiators. So yeah, Kanisha initiators. They are still in business. So. Um, and now most of them are very old, like probably, you know, about 70, 72, 75, 78. And what is your, uh, what, what is your vision seeing from, you know, 2021? Are they going to elect more so-called? Well, they no, the GBC elects, anytime a guru is gone, the GBC elects another one. Oh, this so this is going to continue, Narayan Nar Prabhu, is that what you well, say? It will continue until, it will continue, but it will break down. It will break down because people are going to be tired of the same old, same old. Mm. As long as the movement is increasing, as long as people live, lead strange but attractive kirtans, as long as books are being distributed, all and feasts are being produced, and deities are being worshipped, People are coming to become Kanisadikaris. And Prabhupada put very clearly in writing that in the ISKCON temples, and let's just say the way he set them up, and even now to the degree that they're still set up the way they are, we mm. can complain about who's in charge, but we can't complain about the deity worship. Usually it's gorgeous, more gorgeous than anywhere in India. Right. What's going on with Mark Yacon's? image oh Who's? he's like a ghost yeah it's like a ghost <coughs> Creep. oh yeah he's he's i think uh uh he he's in the picture and moving in in and out like this so that's why like i'm this. driving i'm sorry oh okay all righty no problem i'll, I'll turn myself be careful, off I'm be sorry. careful don't concentrate on seeing or being seen while you're driving <laughs> One second here. Sorry about that. No problem. Not a problem. So, Ronald Prabhu, this uh, perfect reading that you're doing, uh, uh, was it with some intent? I mean, I just want to know why you picked up this particular. Oh, because uh, uh, it's talking. I, I had some questions regarding the Acharya Sampradaya. So, what does it mean that Acharya Sampradaya, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Gorkishore, I mean, uh, then Bhakti Vinod Thakur, uh, are these Acharyas? Uh, yes. They're Acharyas, uh, right. right? Yes, absolutely. Right. And of course, well, yes. Acharya, Acharya means he who leads by his own example is perfect. Mm. Just like the word Prabhupada, hmm. which was according to the initiates of Bhakti Saranta Saraswati, would only pertain to Bhakti Saranta, no one else, 
descended from him. Prabhupada means Pada means feet. So it's a person at whose feet Prabhus come. In other words, liberated souls can come and take shelter of the feet of Prabhupada. That's why the word, that's what the Prabhupada word means, term. Oh. So we have, we have to really realize that Srila Prabhupada's role in all of this is astonishingly unique. I mean, if you want to see what did he do, he came in old age, heart attack or struggle, whatever, on the Jaladuta boat, came to New York, stayed in the inexpensive rundown lodging, and chanted, and then made a movement, what, incorporated in 1966, was it, Ramachandra? Five. Oh, five, 1965. Yeah. Okay, and four years later, five years later, he comes back to India with a whole bunch of European and American Brahmach householder men, householder women, Brahmacharinis, who didn't ever existed before, that Prabhupada created by being a contrarian following. Bhakti Sarantas, Bhakti Gorka Shordas Babaji. And he came back with sannyasis. He came back with brahmacharis. And they were all acting according better than the ones that are tradi were traditionally in ashrams and whatnot in India. In India, even in the Bhakti, in the Gaudiya Math, the brahmacharis, a, a, a guru would be their sloppy temple badly dressed deities dressed in rags and then the brahmacharis would go out and their whole job would be going to door to door to beg for um for um, rice and uh, rice and dalda and, uh, and beans for i mean you know dal and they would come back and that's what they would do they just were working to feed their stomachs there was no preaching So Prabhupada made a completely different motion, as he mentions in the Falgun Krishna Panchami, uh, telling his God brothers before he went to America. Now is the time to. Now is the time to take up, and become. Uh, real followers of Bhaktisiddhanta become actual, but he said, but in the matter of businessmen, you're accepting disciples. Well, it's not quite that bad in this uh, there We could say about the Kanista initiators, in the matter, in the manner of Boy Scout leaders, you're accepting Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. You know, like they're giving them the real thing, but diluted because they don't, they're not, their experience is insufficient. Who's crashing around? Mahaprabhu Das is crashing around. Oh, 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 okay. Let him crash. <laughs> I, I muted crash him, so. Better than anything I could say. So, anyhow, so anyhow, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so my next question here is this last, uh, um, last sentence that Prabhupada says. Uh, I hope everyone can see it right here. One must worship the lotus feet of the Acharya and live within the society of devotees. Then once endeavored to cross over the nascents will surely be successful. One must worship the lotus feet of the Acharya and live within the society of devotees. So, um, Well, well that's we... what we're doing right now, aren't we? Yes, yes. The Zoom 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 association. <laughs> it actually is more potent than physical associations. Because if we were all in one room together, we would quickly melt into our physical natures and the things we like and we don't like and people we like and try to like or worship or 
don't get along with. You know, all that stuff happens in a room full of people. But what we're doing is we're excelling because we're on Zoom. We can speak transcendentally to one another and echo and reverberate within our own consciousness. Try. We can Hare Krishna. Try. The word Acharya is used, as, you know, more than a handful of times here. Acharya Sampadaya, Acharya Sampadaya. One must worship the Acharya, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, we're very lucky to uh, Acharya's duty, it's saying right here. And uh, Nara Narayan, Nara Narayan, tell that story about. Uh, Srila Prabhupada taking shelter at the you know whose house. You know whose house? The Acharyas. Huh? Remember, hmm. Srila Prabhupada walked into their house. They were going to give him shelter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually told that, that story some time ago. Please tell uh, it again. Tell it again. Yeah. Well, we first moved into Mumbai. Into, uh, you know, we were in Mumbai and the Kashkanga building where all the, um, that's where all the uh, embassies were. A big, right. big stacked skyscraper on the beach. Right. Right. Um, and we were in there. It might have belonged to Dalmia. But oh, anyhow, yeah. what happened is we moved everything out gradually. But when Prabhupada first came to the Juhu land, Everybody began to live with people that were already living there. You can't evict anyone in India. It's just mm -hmm. possible. It's just against custom and against Indian law. So we were all staying in people's houses. Plus, there was a wretched uh, building that was just concrete columns and rough concrete flooring and rebar floating around that we eventually put Chittai mats on it, put a, a, a canvas roof on it, and, um, and a floor, and then we all lived inside there. But for the most part, Aupad came to stay at a family of airline pilots, which hmm. means they had, those were good jobs. And his house was like two stories high, and it had a round little foot, round little stair, round little, yes. huh. you know, stairs on a rounded thing coming up to the doorway. Hmm. And when we got there, the entire Acharya family was there. They were all named Acharya. They were leaning out of the windows on the second floor, the, just like a nobleman coming back to his manor house in England or a place like that. Everybody was there, and then there were Acharyas down on the ground floor welcoming Prabhupada. So Prabhupada came sweeping around the corner through a nice area, of, had some trees and stuff like that. He swept around the corner on the pathway, and he came up to where the building was. And, and um, they were all welcoming him. And there was Kirtan. He had been leading his disciples, so they were strung out like a wedge as usual because everyone wanted to be able to see. So it got to be a wider and wider wedge. Aha, Amiya. Hare Krishna. Jai Prabhu. Jai. Interesting conversation we had. So um, he came, came up there and he walked up to the top of the little sort of red brick colored uh, concrete steps, turned around grandly, put his cane grandly on the ground and swiveled around and looked at all the disciples there and looked over his shoulder at the people that were walking him, welcoming him and said, ah, finally, I am taking shelter of the Acharyas. <laughs> yeah. so he was making a, a joke out of it. But their family name was Acharya, so it was a very clever thing. <laughs> wow. That's, a, that's beautiful. That's, that's a nice one. Best one. Krishna. What's that sound like a big water tank with indigestion? Uh, someone's, 
someone's uh, it stopped maybe it was one of someone's uh, microphone was picking up noise anyways uh jai so that's what's very interesting so you're focusing on the idea of taking shelter of the acharyas well in our case acharyas means acharya we take shelter of Prabhupada. And I have not seen anyone equal to Prabhupada or even reasonably close to being Prabhupada like that. Mm. He's the only one. He wrote all these books. He opened all these temples. God. He all the deities. Everything right. that Iskand is, Prabhupada created while associating with people which in the Falcon Krishna Panchami, Prabhupada says, they're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to expose yourself to non devotees. He not only exposed himself to non devotees, he turned these malachas who are on the verge of being reincarnated as cockroaches, literally, into Brahmins, Pujaris, Sankirtan, Kirtan leaders, editors of books, mm. printers of books. Chai. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, in 1969, that's um, four years after he started the movement, we had a printing Boston, a big, 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 big building in Boston with a gigantic printing press on the ground floor. And that's four years after he set up the ISKCON movement. So is that why, Prabhuji, you said uh, we don't really need to be initiated by any of... Uh the Adhikaris right now, and that uh, initiation is totally in connection with getting, uh, you know, um, associated by Prabhupada. chanting. Yeah, by chanting, but Prabhupada, not just any chanting. Uh, in the, in the, on the back of his record, which if you haven't heard it, I won't <laughs> welcome you to it. It's a re happen, record called Happening. It was the na name of the record company. He, he gave us talk on the back, and I think was something written by Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Thakur. But Prabhupada said, the chanting should be heard from the lips of the pure devotee of the Lord for full effect to be achieved. Ch chanting from the lips of non-devotees should be avoided as much as milk touched by the lips of a serpent has poisonous effect. So the key is not just hearing the mantra, reading the mantra, chanting the mantra, but hearing it from the pure lips of a pure devotee of the Lord, which at this particular time in history, nothing could be easier. You don't have to even pay for it. Just go online and you can get recordings of Prabhupada chanting. Can so, we hear you also chant? I'm sorry? Can we hear you also chant? I also chant. But can, can can we hear we, you say the Mahamantra one? We say what me Mahamantra. I mean not Kirtan, but um, just chanting yes. the Mahamantra. Yes, the chanting. Yes, just the chanting. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So. These uh, initiators, they're giving the Maha Mantra as so-called, you know, Kanishta initiators. So what is the potency? Because obviously it's saying that the mantra must be received to the Acharya or the pure devotee. So, I mean, the mantra we know, it's, it's, a, it's totally transcendental, but a insufficient person is giving it. So what's the actual effect? I mean, will it be the late, latent effect or is no, it going to no. Remember that whole story about the Spanish devotees worshiping basil plants? Acha. They're, worship, they're worshiping these gurus as though they were Prabhupada. They're getting a great deal of benefit from Prabhupada by worshiping them. Not that they should be worshipped, they shouldn't. But they think they're worshiping a pure devotee, so they get that mood of it. However, the chanting that they are benefiting is Listening in the Japa, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Prabhupada chanting with the Japa in the morning. Listening to Prabhupada chanting on recordings. 
That's the pure devotee, lips of the pure devotee. I mean, the people that are um, the initiators, the Kindness initiators, they don't often even chant. I don't know about Vaisheshika. Does he chant a lot? And he kirtans a lot? Uh, he chants, but he chants all kinds of mantras. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a what you call it, an anartha. It's a thing which gets in the way of pure devotional service. But it doesn't end it. Mm. Chanting badly in a perfect in Vaikuntha, which is this kind of temple Prabhupada said is Vaikuntha. Chanting badly in Vaikuntha is better than not chanting or chanting or not chanting at all. Our job is to reform ISKCON, to get it on the right track, not to criticize ISKCON or to even condemn the Kinesta initiators. If they're initiating essentially if there's any potency, it's insofar as the initiator is initiating in behalf of Prabhupada. Mm. If he's not chanting, if he's not initiating and doing the, you know, remember in the initiation ceremony, uh, there's no kirtan as part of the ceremony. He, the spiritual master chants on the beads, which what was being done by Rick Fix since 1970. Right? I mean, they didn't, uh, what's his name? Vashish objects as they weren't called Ritviks back then. It doesn't matter what they're called, they were right. Ritviks. Right. A Ritvik is a person who does the fire sacrifice on behalf of someone else. So when Prabhupada said they could also channel the beads instead of him, that's also a Ritvik act. No matter who does it, you can do it, I can do it, or somebody else can do it. It doesn't take anything more than the willingness of the devotees community to say, yes, this person should be the Ritvik initiator. Oh, why? Because we already have on a prasanna ceremony where baby picks the coins of the books. We already have Shraddha ceremony where the ashes of someone who's passed away are there and you have a ceremony to help them elevate to a higher platform. We already have wedding ceremonies where the men and women are brought together in holy matrimony, meaning as a spiritual matrimony, not just holy matrimony, but as a spiritual connectedness so that their life together will be Krishna conscious. And when they have children, the children will be born into that sacred energy that they came from the sacred fire. So Srila Prabhupada performed, they didn't do any Shraddha ceremonies because somebody died but he performed weddings and initiations. And then Ritviks are doing it now. I mean, we say Ritviks, I mean, in Los Angeles, there's a devotee who does all, all of those things. And when, um, I mean, they didn't, um, what's his name? Rashish objects as they weren't called Ritviks back then. It doesn't matter. Things. It doesn't matter what they're called. I mean, Prabhupada was, it took his sannyas initiation from his god brother, Keshava Maharaj, who was a sannyasi. He, he's that sannyasi, who is not a pure devotee, was a disciple of Bhaktisiddhanta. And Keshava had a disciple, and that disciple performed the initiation ceremony for Srila Prabhupada in the presence of Keshava. And then yeah. that disciple got puffed up and claimed that he was actually Prabhupada's elder godbrother because he said sannyas, he was took sannyas seven years before Prabhupada. So he said, because I took seven years, then I'm elder, there's real initiation to sannyas, so I'm his senior, he said. Okay. Even though he was younger by far, 25 years younger. I think Bhanu Prabhu is on. Bhanu Prabhu had a question. Bhanu Prabhu, we were discussing about Bhagavatam. Right, Bhanu Prabhu, can you ask a question? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Jai. Welcome, Bhanu. We, we welcome you. I can't have a happy evening without seeing Bhanu's face and hearing Jai, Bhanu's Bhanu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Jai, Bhanu Prabhu. Right. Okay, so Bhana Prabhu, your question. You, you, I think about Bhagavatam. Can we, uh, what was it? Can you advance? 
by reading Bhagavatam? What was it? I forget. I mean, what are the benefits of reading Bhagavatam? Yeah. What? Okay, I will try not to speak a long time. I can answer that question if you want. Would you like yes, to Yes, go ahead, Narayan no, no, no Prabhu. I'll, well, no, I want Manu to. Answer. Does Manu want me to answer it? Is that okay with Manu? Yeah, yeah sure. Sure, Prabhu. Okay. Uh, as you've heard me say before, and I will reiterate it here, and this will answer your question, I hope, perfectly. And that is, we start out by reading Isopanishad. Ishavats, no, Om, let's see, how does it start? Om Purna Madaha Purna Miram. The Lord is perfect and complete, and his parts, parts are complete, the whole is complete like that, it, but yet he remains a complete balance. Then Ishavasyam Midam Sarvam describes the Jiva's relationship to the to Isha or the Supreme Being. Okay, so Isha, and that takes you up to the point of the Isapanishad where it says, oh my, you know, it takes you all the way. It's the, really the introduction to theology, the Isapanishad. The introduction to the understanding that God exists and it gives you a primitive idea in the first verses what is God like and what is his nature? And it takes up to the end, I think there's 18 verses there. And at the end, the, just, the devotee cries out, oh, please take away that radiance from in front of your face so that I can see you. So it takes him from the realm of not knowing if God exists through the process, becomes a devotee, not an atheist. And he comes up there and yet he's still in Brahman, meaning the impersonal energy of the Lord, the, the Brahmacharya. He says, put aside your radiance. I want to see you face to face. And that is where he becomes a personalist. Then in the introduction of the Gita, Prabhupada, Gita as it is, Prabhupada says, I hope it's not too long. Prabhupada says, uh, the Gita is different than any other scripture in the world, like the Bible, Quran, the Torah, and all these other scriptures. Um, it's, it's different than all those scriptures because it's spoken directly by Krishna. Whereas all the other scriptures are spoken about G slash D, somebody that they say is God. They actually say G slash D because they don't want to say God because they feel they're not worthy to say it the name of the supreme being but all that's all they know is how to say god they don't know anything about past times they know nothing about it so when we get there to the introduction to the gita Prabhupada says he he is able to he is spoken by the supreme being himself okay then the gita as you well know having read it so much uh it's spoken by krishna the supreme personality of godhead to Arjuna, his associate who travels with him throughout the universe in two ways, Narayan also is Krishna and Arjuna. And, um, and he takes him through a theological journey, which is not necessary. Arjuna is already an Uttamadakari of the highest sort, an associate of Krishna's, an intimate associate of Krishna's. But they, for the sake of humanity, they give that whole talk of the Bhagavad Gita. So you say, okay, now this is amazing. Uh, you know, I was a Muslim, or I was a Christian, I was a Jew, and now look at me. I'm hearing from God Himself, which is not even referred to in those scriptures. Then what happens? Then you say, now I know who God is. His teaching is magnificent. I want to do what Arjuna did, which is obey Him. But I don't know anything about Krishna. He doesn't just stand on battlefields, does he? Let me know, what is he like? Okay, then we get to the Bhagavatam, your question. The Srivad Bhagavatam. First canto, childhood pastimes. The creation wow. of the universe, everything is taught there. Childhood pastimes, and older and older. It is said that the childhood pastimes of Krishna are Krishna's lotus feet. And gradually, as you go up to different cantos, you go up to different body parts, like his waist, his chest, his arms, his throat, his 
than his head, 10th canto. So that takes you all the way up. So why to study the Bhagavatam? To understand who Krishna is, not just on the battlefield, standing there, talking, <clears throat> with Sanjaya transmitting. No, that he's there, and he's bringing everyone up. Uh, you bring, by reading the Bhagavatam, you can become entranced. Krishna's stealing butter, giving it to monkeys. He's killing the Agasura demon. Oh, he killed Trinavarta, the, the, uh, the cart demon he killed. I mean, all of these things are there. And then he dances with the gopis in 10th canto. So as you come up to the whole thing, you find out what that Krishna, what he does. So the Bhagavatam is the books about what 10th cantos, 12th cantos, what Krishna does. Then you finish with the cantos, reading what Krishna does. It said, now I know everything about Krishna. I find out who God was. I find out there is a God. He's a Panashan. I found out that God speaks. That's the introduction to Gita. I found out that God is on the battlefield, and that's really who the Supreme Being is. Yes. Then I go to Bhagavatam, and I learn from babyhood all the way up to maturity and dancing with gopis. This is Krishna's activities. They are so relishable. And then the, the devotee, by this time I'll just say devotee, says, cries out, they said, there's only one thing missing. How do I worship him? Then there's the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I'm talking 10,000 years of the golden age of Kali. So those four things take you up to the stage of where you can not only worship Lord Ch Krishna as Lord Chaitanya and as Krishna, but as you're worshiping Krishna, you're worshiping him in a way which no one has ever been able to. Mortal men, ordinary people, what to speak of, malachas, drunkards, ravenas, drug dealers, non-vegetarians and all that. No one could have that experience of worshiping Krishna. But Lord Chaitanya broke up with the storehouse of love of God. And Prabhupada writes, uh, and that when he broke open the storehouse of love of God, the bhakti, the holy name, flooded the land. And he said, those who were devotees in this flood, they're standing there, they're inundated with, drenched in the holy energy of the Maha Mantra coming out of the storehouse where it was guarded jealously by certain special Brahmins. Now, hard to know, hard and fast rules means not that we can chant like idiots, but that, but that, the, mm. that we are allowed to chant even though we're not first-class Bhakti Brahmins of a qualified nature. And so uh, he said, when the flooded out, those who were devotees, they drowned. And those who are not devotees, skeptics, karmis, Jai. they floated. So that mm. is the, does that satisfy you? That's, I, once again, I talk a lot. But does that satisfy you concerning why we read the Bhagavatam? And we're reading all the scriptures to to come to know, to know the why we should chant Hare Krishna mantra, but does uh, reading Bhagavatam exclusively is it a devotional service in itself by itself? Oh, of course, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smanam. Whatever you hear and chant of the Lord's glories, that is your glory. Then when you do it, so will we advance? You by, by just by reading Bhagavatam and uh, will we attain perfection? Absolutely. Absolutely. But if you want to really, really reach perfection, find out how you can access the inner core of the Bhagavatam by reading about Lord Chaitanya, who made the Hare Krishna mantra available to people like you and me. I could never have I could never have been worthy of the 
Hare Krishna mantra. But by it describes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that Lord Chaitanya made it available to even animals to become devotees. Prabhupada said in this again on the back of that record, even a dog can take even a child can take part in it, he said. Even a dog can take part in it. Can mm -hmm. you imagine? If a dog likes when everyone's jumping and dancing, he will come and dance and chant too. jump also. So it's not as though it's special for humans. Any jiva. This is Lord Chaitanya's. That's why this 10,000 year thing. Did, I'm not saying anyone should not go back to God in, in this at the end of this lifetime. Go ahead. If you know how to do it, do it and take me with you. But the thing is, I'm just saying, if it takes a few births or a number of births, even a lot of births, that is Lord Chaitanya's glory in that we have been given a gift from him that we're not worthy of. And we can give it to so many other people that are not worthy of it either. And they can become liberated souls. And that will be very blissful, pleasurable experience as much as being in Krishna Loka with Krishna. Why? Because Krishna is not different than his name. Really not different than his name. It's not that we chant in order to go to Krishna Loka. We chant in order to be with Krishna. And Krishna is Krishna in his holy name. So if we perfect chanting, we're in Krishna Loka. That is Krishna Loka. If we do it perfectly. In such a way that he's satisfied. So, I'm sorry, I talked too much, Banu. Please forgive me. But is that okay? Yes, Prabhu. Prabhuji, I have a follow-up to that. I just want to clarify this with you. You mentioned we have to read the Isha Upanishad as in, is that the starting point to understand all of this? Is that how we need to transition or, or reading anything that we suddenly start resonating with is okay? Oh, no, no, you can read whatever you like. But I'm just pointing out that if you, you don't have to start, you can start with the Gita or start with the Bhagavatam or do them all at once. But I'm just saying we can do them all at once. But if you want to make sense out of what they are, then it starts with the Isopanishad. If you read the Isopanishad, it leads you to the Bhagavatam, to the Bhagavad Gita. You read the Bhagavad Gita, it leads you to the Srimad Bhagavatam. And you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, it leads you to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But if you don't read the Chaitanya Charitamrita while you're reading the Bhagavatam, you'll be missing out. I'm just putting a chronology. Yes, that's all works. I wanted to know. Okay. It's the math. It's the, the math. Yeah. Where does you, Brahma Samhita fall under, Prabhuji? Go ahead and read the Isupanishad. It's a wonderful read. Right. Prabhuji, where does Brahma Samhita fall under? Where? The Brahma Samhita predates uh, our immediate branch of the Sampradaya, although it was handed down. Now, uh, it was translated. By not, or it's not predates our Sampradaya, but predates Prabhupada. He didn't translate it. It was oh, okay. translated by Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Thakur. Okay. And the Brahma Samhita is like a the book that you should have read in high school <laughs> because it tells you everything you need to know about astronomy, astrology, and the origin of the universe the development of the universe. It's like the book of Genesis in the Bible, except the book of Genesis okay. is 99.9999% based on ignorance, with one tiny little fragment here and there being true or, or revealing anything. And look what the Christians have done with it. The Jews and Christians and Muslims have done with the book of Genesis. They've mag magnified it. It's, it's really to their credit that they take so little and get so much out of it. But we have the Brahma Samhita, which describes how the universe came into being, how the, you know, the Bhakti Prajapati is to Prabhu. No, I've not heard of that, Prabhuji. You have not heard of the Prajapatis? No. Oh, okay. Well, just to give you a very quick insight, in the Brahma Samhita, you know, Brahma is, comes into contact, after the universe is created, it's empty, except well, after the universe is created, Vishnu goes in. 
um, what's that, Gargadaka Shavishu, he goes in and begins to perspire. When he perspires, half the universe fills up with perspiration. Then Balram comes in as Seishanaga and lies in, coils up on the water. And Vishnu lies down on Seishanaga, who's called in the Shastras, interestingly, the couch of Ananta, meaning that couch of Ananta means Lord Vishnu's couch. And then Lakshmi comes and sits at Lord Vishnu's feet and massages him. From Lord Vishnu's belly, this is all Brahmasamita, from Lord Vishnu's belly comes a lotus stem that goes up, 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 close to the top of the curvature of the outside part of the universe, which is where the heavenly planets will eventually be. But it's all empty and it's dark. There's no light. And there a lotus develops. A lotus stem comes up with leaves and everything. Then a lotus develops. And that lotus is open. And then Brahma is manifested sitting in that lotus in the complete dark. And Brahma absolutely bewildered. He doesn't know how he got there, what he's supposed to do, why he's there. And in that point, in that place, uh, in that place in the universe, uh, in the darkness, he reaches out, he touches lotus petals, he says, what the heck, lotus petals, you know, what does that mean? And he crawls between them and starts going down the stem. If he succeeded in going all the way down the stem, he would land on the navel of Lord Vishnu. But the stem is so completely long, it goes through the entire universe, that he gives up and he goes crawling back up and crawls through the lotus petals and sits down, sort of disgruntled. And he doesn't know what to do. He's completely disconcerted. And so he looks around, there's nothing there. So he begins to do the only thing you can do when there's nothing else you can do. And there's no support, no people to talk to, no thing to see with your eyes or touch or taste with your tongue. He meditates. And as he meditates, as he meditates, Baru, is this too much talking? I thought Brahma Samhita contains the description of the spiritual world. Okay. Describes wait, wait. Let, let, let me finish with this one little bubble out of millions, okay? And I'll, I'll address it, yes. Uh, but I want to do this for sure. But the, in the, he meditates. And when he meditates, he goes further and further inward, because that's what meditation is all about. When he goes further inward, he see, hears the sound of Krishna's flute. And Krishna's flute becomes sound, becomes a Gayatri mantra. And as he hears the flute, he begins to, as it were, hallucinate visions of realities outside of the universe. He sees all these planets floating in the in the Brahma Jyoti, etc. And then he sees Krishna Loka with Krishna there. And he and he's busy chanting mantras, Venum Gandvantam Aravinda Dalaya Daksham Bharavatam Samasitam Buddhasundarangam Kanda Pakoti Kamaniya Ishaisasobam because he becomes aware that it is Krishna's abode that he's going to. But when he, he chants, Anyhow, he keeps chanting these mantras. It's called the Brahma Samhita. At one point, the vision opens up and he can see Krishna in Krishna Loka. And, you know, he's chanting all these nice Vedic-style mantras. So at one point, he sees Krishna Loka, and he loses his composure. Or as we used to say, loses his cool. He freaks out completely. He shrieks. Chintamani prakara sad mansur, kalpa vriksha lakshavrite su. 
सुरभि अभि अपार्यंतम लक्ष्मी सहस्रा सत संभ्रमन सेववनम गोविंद मारे पुरुष तमाम spiritual gems chintamani prakara kalpa so everything's made kalpa viksha the trees are all desire for fulfilling trees laksha prasesu surabhi abhi apalyantam the surabhikas are drenching the land irrigating the land with milk that flows freely from their udders without being milked surabhi abhi apalyantam lakshmi sahasrasat the goddesses of fortune are sweeping the chintamani stones which are pure spiritual gems not because they're dirty which they're not but only to um but to but to please the supreme lord to krishna to please krishna they're sweeping the chintamani stones which are spotless with their brooms chintamani and then he cries out govindam ari purusham tamaham bhajami and so he says govinda meaning krishna the cowherd boy govinda the cow goes cow govinda adi purusham the original personality of god it adi means original purusham means person the original person in all existence in krishna loka govinda adi purusham tamaham bhajami I offer my prostrated obeisances to him. So that's the Brahma Samhita in a nutshell. So after he does all of that, he's able to begin the process of creation. He creates light in the universe, in the in the in the um, in the um, Christian uh, Judeo-Christian and Muslim uh, book of Genesis. It says the Creator said, "Let there be light," and there was light. So they're really talking about Brahma, but they don't know that. They so don't know about. yes. Yeah, so I want to open it up. We got more devotees here. We got Amio Prabhu, Andrew Anand Prabhu. We have Arun Vasudev Prabhu. Uh, Great. If okay. anyone has so, a question or well, they want to discuss can, something, can, can I just finish? Yes. Her, answer her question. A few more minutes. Not too long. Yes. So, no, no. Right away. The question is: She creates the prajapatis. which are the the sages and the sages create the prajapatis and they are the original forebears of all human beings progenitors yes. progenitors yes. yes and these four human being progenitors uh are have what they called gotra the gotra oh, identifies okay. which of those progenitors we descend from so even in india today people is or have or pretend to have knowledge of the gotra from which they descended from the very beginning of the universe jai we and we I, all know yeah. we have gotras but then we didn't know this is how it is actually from I'm sorry? Oh, i said we all uh, definitely know gotras because we we definitely uh, said that during uh, the archana that we do in temples but we didn't know this is where it is all coming from or i didn't know well, Yeah so that's is where gotra comes from is from the prajapatis praja prajapati pati means father praja means of children right praja is your descendants prajapatis means those who created everyone genetically in the universe and it comes all the way back all the way down to us and if you know the gotra your own gotra that's good if a person like myself has no idea what their actual gotra is but we get to accept from prabhupada the acharya his gotra which yeah. is even, even better than having knowing our own gotra you know who knows so i'd like to invite anyone who's watching on youtube and facebook we have this zoom discussions every wednesday today's wednesday and then uh, this is america time sacramento los angeles 
Uh, we have it on Wednesdays and Saturdays and Sundays, and we're going to expand more and more as people join. So anyone who's watching on Zoom, I mean, uh, on, on Facebook or on YouTube, if you'd like to participate, you're welcome to. Please just send me a message, and then we'll add you to our WhatsApp group, and then you can participate live. But if you want to join live right now, you can just ask for the link, and I'll send it to you. And you can come on live. We will welcome you. Jai. Okay. Uh, Raya has, a, has one more question. Yes, share Prabhu. Maybe she can Ronald Prabhu, you, uh, can I can I steal away some more time? Yes, why not? We we okay. have till we we have till ten o'clock, so we still have some time. All right, uh, Prabhuji, I just wanted to know when you were with Srila Prabhupada, did he have a certain um, framework or structure on how you have to personally proceed in your spiritual path, like? Did he prescribe what books to read or was there a day-to-day -day, uh, activity that you had to do? W what is it that it was like when he was there? Well, we, we've, when I joined, there were no books, just the Srimad Bhagavatam, his original ones. Then we finally got the Gita and we got smaller books and stuff like that. But it was sort of like a group experience. We would have class and we'd all study from the same Gita. And we all, it was all, everything was in the temple. We all did everything together. In those days, it was much nicer than it is today because everybody was full of excitement, enthusiasm. The books were hot off the press. So we were first people to read them in the world, you know. So it was a very exciting thing. So that's pretty much what it was. And he didn't give different books to different people. He, we all read the same books, but we had classes and he would give the class with the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam in the morning, Gita at night. And from those, we would ask questions. But he would, these lectures that he gave even in 1969 are available on tape. You want to know what it was like? Get a Prabhupada lecture from 1969 and you'll be there. And you can you sit with the Brahmacharinis and I'll sit with the Brahmacharis on the other side of the room. And we can all listen to the same lecture by Srila Prabhupada, which I listened to, then you can also not listen to. Same lecture. Okay, that's I think winds that up. Does, is that okay, Shraya? Yes, Prabhuji. All right, Krishna. Enjoy. Yeah, we want to recreate all of that, but we first of all have to get out of the initiator stage, the Kanista initiator stage, where people are coming up through the, the Kanista Adhikari and get ready to renounce, not their house or anything, renounce their material consciousness and enter gradually into the um, Madhya Madhikari where they regain their original Swarup and they regain their, and develop afresh their loving exchanges with Krishna that end up when Uta Madhikari, their rasa with Krishna in Krishna Loka. Go ahead. Okay. So now cool. I'm out. Anyone else have uh, any questions? Amir Prabhu? Ma Ma Prabhu, we haven't heard from Ma Prabhu. Who, who else is here? Ma Prabhu is here. Amir Prabhu, Bhanu Prabhu, Arun Vasudev, Andrew Ananda Prabhu, so, Prabhuji. and Shreya Prabhu. I'm still driving. All righty. Go ahead. Prabhuji. Almost home. Okay, Amir Prabhu, go ahead. Prabhuji, if someone does not come to Krishna consciousness, then how he will be go back to Godhead? What is the plan for him? Of That's Krishna? why you're there. That's why you're there to enlighten them. All right, Amir Prabhu, you find them out. It's your service well, to find no, no. them he's out. Asking, he's asking, once you become a devotee, say you're living in a temple or on a Zoom call, how <laughs> do you go back to Godhead? What no, is he, he's, no that, was, that was not his question. Amir, can you re-ask your question? Prabhuji, if someone does not believe in Krishna or someone does not come into Krishna consciousness, then what is the plan for, for him to go back to, to, go back to Godhead? I mean, let him chant the Krishna's name once and the journey will start. Yeah, I 
What if yes. what if it is why, a Christian why, or a Muslim? Because Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya chanted so purely that everyone in the Sampradaya chants identically purely to, to Lord Chaitanya. And therefore, when you chant to somebody, you got it from Prabhupada purely. And that's why they will go back to Godhead, because it's still pure after 500 and something years. God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, Prabhuji, you were going to say something. and I. Amiyo, Prabhu, Jai. You got your answer, Amiyo, Prabhu? No, no, Prabhuji. No? Prabhuji, I am saying that if someone does not believe in Krishna or Krishna consciousness, then what is the plan of Krishna to bring back to God? Oh, oh, I just explained, but maybe I should look at it from a different angle. To chant once the holy name of Krishna from your lips to their ear, they will go back to Godhead. It's just a matter of time. No, Prabhuji, he's trying to ask what what will Krishna do about it, not, not how we can get them into the Krishna consciousness. He's asking, does Krishna also have a plan for the non-devotees or the non-believers in Krishna? I see. That's a nice distinction. Yes, but remember, Krishna is fully present in his name. So if you want to know what the... Krishna's not standing there like a... Like a what you call it, a governess or in a nursery with a bunch of kids looking down strictly and telling them what to do. No, Krishna is in, the, in his name. That's the miracle of the Krishna consciousness is that we're saying, Where, when will I find Krishna? Well, when you say Krishna, that is Krishna. You found Krishna. So just chant once to the holy name to someone who's not a devotee Maybe it will take them a hundred lifetimes or a thousand lifetimes, but they will go back to Godhead eventually. And the one who does not hear, he will not go back to God. So what you're Only saying is, so what you're saying is, it might take many lifetimes before somebody can get the realization of uh, Krishna consciousness. And until then, he's just going to keep striving for it. And that's what's God's plan. That's what's Krishna's plan. Yes, yes, that's Krishna's plan. Yeah, because it's, it's also the individual person's plan. We, Krishna will never tell us what to, to, Krishna will tell us how we can achieve his association so easily. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, we just achieved his association. Oh, I didn't see Krishna. That's because my eyes are not pure. But if my eyes were transcendentally pure, I would say Hare Krishna, and I'd be seeing Krishna, right? So when that other person hears, he might hear, uh, this is the early days of ISKCON, uh, that somebody would we'd go chanting in the streets and people would get in the van and come back with us, in the vehicle and come back with us and join the temple. That's how easy it was for them to become devotees. Right now it's more complicated, it's more political, it's more structured, it's more money-centered, it's more guru-centered, you know, uh, meaning... The Kanissa initiators want to be in the focus of everything instead of making Krishna the focus of everything. So that's just our, our that's our process. We're like chiropractors. We have to make make the right adjustments on the body of this gun. So um, so does that at all satisfy your question? Yes, Prabhuji. And again, Prabhuji, I am asking that if somebody does not want to go back to Godhead, then how Krishna will bring back this Jiva to again Golaka? Or him? Well, but, but look, look at it from the start. Why are we in the... Why are you and I... Prabhuji, can I try answering that? Why are you and I in the material world right now? Yes. Sure, Prabhu wants to answer that question. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Prabhuji, I would say... I would say, like Arjuna, who was put into test of times, this particular jiva who does not want to go to uh, Godhead will be put to test in so many different ways that the only option he will be left with is to seek the reality, is to seek the Krishna consciousness. Because only according to this, 
only according to krishna consciousness will he be able to come out of it so that is what prabhu ji is also saying in terms of yeah. the material world so it, 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 what does god do he is going to give him enough and more troubles when you can't solve a problem your teacher gives you an easier problem when you solve it and you're happy she gives you the next difficult question so that's how we will keep facing different uh, troubles and testing times and and slowly we will be pushed into the right uh, track but the more a jeeva starts uh, wanting to hear the right information the more you start seeking the more correct information will be presented to you it all depends on the mm-hmm. craving that you uh, you know uh, kind of have i hope that is somewhat connecting to what you're looking for oh, that's a wonderful picture that's what i was trying to say but you said it better than i could for wrong. sure wonderful yes but yes but the key is whoever hears the sound vibration of krishna in kirtan conversation or japa it's over here in japa he will eventually get that point and follow that point until you know the light at the end of the tunnel the ch- mantra is the light at the end of the tunnel he can stay in the tunnel as long as he wants but when he wants to get out he knows which way to go because he follows the light at the end of the tunnel when he goes out there he is in the spiritual world so and we have and to- this and there's that uh, situation that we can also contemplate on arjuna although he was uh, almost a superpower himself uh, being uh, you know an archer and the world's best in in fact being such great people they were not given the information about krishna consciousness until the battle of kurukshetra which means lord krishna did spend so much time with them all throughout he was their friend they would associate in so many uh, you know throughout their life they are in association with krishna but then the realization only happened at that point in time when uh, arjuna you know surrendered and said i'm all yours you guide me right. so yeah. you will be tested the way the pandavas were tested they were correct yes. they were uh, dharmic they were following the right things but yet they were the ones who were tested even more That's so but, but, but we have to remember that Krishna's pastimes on earth are transcendental but he came here just to manifest himself as the object of worship of all living beings uh he is in the spiritual sky also and that's when he came as lord chaitanya he didn't come to kurukshetra he came down to to mayapur and 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 manifested as radha and krishna together he, he it, there's nothing historic involved all the the pandavas were all associates with lord krishna before they fought at the kurukshetra they all these were pastimes conducted to educate people like us that's all we were they're they're teaching it's a teaching for us not a growth process for them i mean they're already that give you answer amir prabhu yes uh-huh. thank you yes yeah, great okay time's You're going all quick, quick. Roll tonight it's really good time's going what's next banu prabhu amir prabhu mahaprabhu oh where did rupa manjari stay or she left uh she has left narayan prabhu Oh that's too bad we should have got her talking. Uh-huh. I think it's past her bedtime. <laughs> oh that could be. Yes. All right. Mahaprabhu. Yes sir. Anything you want to share? And Prabhu no. and I'm ju- I'm enjoying the conversation. Chai. Excellent. And if I I love the somebody... discussion. Very good. Very good. I'm almost home. A <laughs> long drive. Hare Krishna. Jai. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna brought me home safely tonight. Hari bol. Hari bol. Hare Krishna. Amir no. Prabhu. Go ahead Amir Prabhu. Yes. Um yes Prabhu Prabhu that I am asking that if I am chanting lord's name and at the same time I am doing all kinds of rascal things nonsense things 
then what will happen to me how will krishna punish me how punish you'll be no. you'll krishna be forgiven doesn't pu- krishna doesn't punish anybody krishna dances and chants in krishna loka and associates with the pure devotees he's the baby of mother yasoda he dances with gopis he doesn't punish yamaraj punishes yamadutas punish so you're not punished ever punished by krishna you're punished by the karmic reaction to your own acts you punish yourself hari krishna how do you explain it please a little bit you all need to be punished if you break the law who suffers you suffer right so it's right. difficult to understand yeah if you <laughs> you know the police come no, no, Prabhu, that i am i am saying that simultaneously or at the same time i am chanting the lord's name and doing all kinds of breaking the rules then what will happen don't do that who, who who's who's talking amio aha so yeah oh, go ahead this mura so you are benefiting by chanting and you're creating a bad next birth for yourself by the things you're doing wrong very simple <laughs> so in your next birth you have a worse birth but chant, but you'll be chanting or around people that are chanting <laughs> maybe you'll become a dog in the house of a devotee or next door to a house of a devotee or temple and you're being there barking and howling oh and they're chanting hare krishna hare bol and you go oh oh and then hare bol yes indeed that's it amio yeah. that should that's answer all of us <laughs> no. we're all in the same boat <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you be my dog i be your dog yeah oh. that's <laughs> right <laughs> 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 Bow wow. Yeah, that's it. Bow wow. The Kanista Adhikari is in a clearing stage. He is chanting nicely under good guidance, hearing Prabhupada on tapes if nothing else. And he is he, he's advancing and yet he also has material desires. So he wants to eat. So he tries to confine himself to eating prasadam. and not sneaking off for french fries somewhere else he tries to you know he follows the regulated principles but he wishes he could get married because that pramacharya there across the temple room is so, so cute so he has sinful essentially material desires but he restrains them with the four regulated principles right now if he doesn't follow the four regulated principles in chance well then he can't be a kinnasadikari if he's not a kinnasadikari then he is a pre kanista adhikari and when he learns to follow the principles then he becomes a kanista adhikari at some point when you dance up the scale of kanista adhikari you don't lose have any interest in anything covered by the four regular principles you don't walk down the street saying i wish i had a big piece of beef to eat you don't do that you don't you don't think about girls from the point of view of sex you think about girls from the point of view of them being like goddesses of fortune and oh shucks yeah and gambling why would we want to waste money doing that so uh, we should always be introspective of our desires and where we were and how are we progressing right by this uh, uh, by uh, watching our thoughts watching our actions like this yes krishna dakari we must be re- we must remember that we are material beings as well we're going to mm. make mistakes yes. Yes. well we're not material beings we have material bodies and we identify with the bodies and therefore desire to make mistakes would i am asking this question because when we see various uh, politicians actors or or um, various other philosophy people mayavadis they they have also got this hum- this precious human form of life 
but they are in, indulging in mundane affairs is this pandu amir prabhu uh, amir acha oh okay i'm sorry can't see anybody it's it's amir prabhu speaking you guys amir okay you got five to the screen yeah. oh there 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 you are hari krishna yes probably yeah. that's why that's why i am asking that other people also got this precious human form of life so how they it's are an opportunity yeah human form of life is an opportunity it's yes. not a guarantee. it is not a guarantee even if you have yes. a rich father it doesn't mean you're going to be rich some day by when he dies he'll leave you his money he might lose his money before he dies and you won't have money you never know what's going to happen so be, having a human body is a great opportunity to make advancements by hearing and chanting shravanam kirtan all i can say is look at prabhupada did he went to the west found people that were <laughs> literally going to become cockroaches in their next life and turned them into brahmins that's amazing and if they fell down from that they'll continue in their next life try All right. So there's no it says in the Gita there's no loss or diminution along the path in this endeavor. When you even you make a big mistake there's no loss. Right? It doesn't matter. But if you want to save time and take advantage of a great opportunity then become a pure devotee in this lifetime as much as you can. Try. Surrender to Krishna. this time now why i mean how many bad things can a person do uh, i will tell you when you get to be 80 years old all the bad things you do will have become bad habits and you will be suffering from arthritis because of the bad habits you'll be suffering from gout you'll be having alzheimers because of bad habits Yes so Prabhu ji when I have when, better not to have yes, bad habits when you're young then when you get old when I was uh, I I was a teenager or a boy I have done lots of mistakes not knowing unknowingly unknowingly then what will happen to me before oh, coming to Krishna so consciousness I, I, I would like to go yes, ahead go ahead and Bhagavad Gita 31st verse Prabhu ji Bhagavad Gita chapter 9 31st verse uh, Ronald Prabhuji would you mind sharing your screen I'd like him to just read at least that part Okay let me pull it up one second Bhagavad Gita chapter what 9 31 31 yes and okay. and one question Prabhuji and and that in India especially in India that uh, some uh, spiritual when at the time some spiritual teacher comes people follow them then again one spiritual teacher comes then people follow them then this how this bewilderment comes then how people well, understand that if it's a pure devotee if it has to be the sattvic succession meaning has to come from bhakti sarantha saraswati down and no, no, when you ji, follow- i'm saying that i'm saying that when uh, sankaracharya was here people will follow him when Mm, Prabhu ji, Ramakrishna uh, was here. Where the the people of Bengal follow him. That's what well, I that's said. That, oh, oh. Well, in first Shankar Charya, that was an intermediary step. Ah. Whoever followed him didn't go back to God. Okay, Amir Prabhu, is, your first question. Your first question you asked, and Shreya Prabhu found the answer to it. And uh, yes, why don't you read it? Share Amir the screen, Prabhu ji. Here. Share the screen. Okay. okay please one, one one second here there you go this is bhagavad gita chapter 9 verse uh, 31 you want to read it amir prabhu is that what who did that share the screen oh yes uh, yes i'm reading translation he quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace o son of kunti declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes yes wonderful verse purport 
power of. This should not be understood. In the seventh chapter, the law says that one who is engaged in mysterious activities cannot become a devotee of the Lord. Oh, one who is not a devotee of the Lord has no good qualifications whatsoever. The question remains then: How can a person engaged in abominable activities, either by accident or intention, be a pure? devotee this question may justify just what justly be raised the miscreants as stated in the seventh chapter who never come to the devotional service of the lord have no good qualifications as it stated in the srimad bhagavatam generally a devotee who is engaged in the nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contamination from the heart he puts the supreme personality of godhead within his heart and all sinful contaminations are naturally washed away continuous thinking of the supreme lord makes him pure by nature according to the vedas there is a certain regulation that if one follow falls down, that if one falls down from his exalted position he has to undergo certain ritualistic process to purify himself but here there is no such condition because the purifying process is already there in the heart of the devotee due to his remembering the supreme personality of godhead constantly therefore the chanting of the hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare 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 should be continued without stoppage this will protect a devotee from all accidental fall downs he will thus remain perpetually free from all material contaminations wow jai wow your question is answered jai amazing huh? that is a perfect perfect verse in purport thank well you chosen. priya prabhu ji you are very welcome amya prabhu ji for your next question you must read the important shlokas uh, as it is given in the bhagavad gita so i've shared the link in the chat it is the 108 important bhagavad gita shlokas chapter 4 it will talk about uh, your next question wow amazing thank you <laughs> so does that give you some answer to your question <coughs> try yes. i was able to bring us quick one one little bit of writing <laughs> She was able to uh, solve the whole thing. I was struggling to express. Amiya Prabhuji uh, just quoted my past questions, so I knew the answers straight there. <laughs> I yeah. had the same. I oh, no. had the same experience, Amiya Prabhuji. Uh, earlier, Bhano Prabhuji asked some questions. Those were running in my head, so I, I'm just a little ahead in finding answers. That's all. Amiya <laughs> Prabhuji, uh, that question because in Bengal, especially in Bengal, Bengali peoples are love to eat fish. They never. live eating fish so what will happen to them what will happen to us bengali people they will never you, live in this there well For... not all bengalis eat oh, go ahead Pardon. yes You're all the answer. people eat fish egg onion garlic and chicken they will never live no so it is come, it is like you, in the form of lord jagannath even right. though you eat yes. he can be worship No, no, I, I don't want to be old Steve Prabhu. I am, I am, I am, I am concerned about them. I am concerned about my these family well, members. You, you have to chant for them then. Society, friendship, love. Huh? That's your concern. <laughs> But Prabhu, consider, consider that what you're saying about Bengalis. When Prabhu Pat came to New York City, there was not a single person that was not worse than the worst Bengali. 
And he made them into devotees. And they gave up eating fish. They gave up eating chicken. Why? To, to it's to called some extent, a, a higher taste. Prasadam was a higher taste. They tasted prasadam. They no longer wanted to eat dead animals. Is Prabhuji, is it is it not true that uh, when you eat fish, basically you're uh, attaching yourself with the karma of uh, the way it, it dies when you know it's taken out of water? It's actually throbbing. It's it's suffering so much b before it it loses its life. So you take a take in all that karma, right? That that is the reason why it is said not to have meat or yes. fish or whatever. Body. yes, yes, bodies of animals, yes. You know, mm. yeah, it's all right. Fun. We have uh, we have it's nine fun. minutes, it, so I'm counting down. It, 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 yeah, interestingly, according to Shastra, according to Prabhupada, said that the fish is, in terms of order of birth, actually lower than most vegetables. So he's a lower birth than a vegetable. And I was walking into the airport in Calcutta one day, and I was talking with some guy. And that's back in the days when Bengalis were jumping all over the place. They were so excited and enthusiastic. And I was talking about the four regulator principles. And he agreed, but he said, no, you have to be able to eat fish. And he's a Bengali. He said, you have to be able to eat fish. I said, no, you don't have to eat fish. I said, only vegetables. But I was walking up the stairs to the, uh, to the to airport. I think an airport or train station, something like that. And he was with true Bengali enthusiasm, he was running after me and screamed as I disappeared over the top of the stairs. But a fish is a vegetable that lives in the sea. Yes, <laughs> yes, probably that's what I'm asking. That they consider fish fish as a vegetable and egg also. Yeah, they think, but they actually, it's not a not a, not a vegetable. And this is largely because of Ramakrishna and Kali worship. The Ramakrishna is not a bona fide guru, and Kali is not a worshipable deity for a Vaishnav. The people of Bengal can worship Kali or Durga, whatever they like. And I've seen the worship, and there's a fantastic movie Mommy, about it. Antelope. So, Prabhuji, that's yeah. what I do. Then, then uh, when I, I am asking my family members to live eat, eating the fish or egg, they are calling me the neighbors also that I am going mad. <laughs> you well, are going mad. I can see that. What a, but why don't you introduce your your family, your neighbors to the gotra of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He's, he was a Bengali and he was working for the British. You would think he was eating beef, but no, he was strict vegetarian. And all of the Acharyas, so many, and Lord Chaitanya himself from Bengal. They, they know they know the things, but they don't want to accept. They, they know don't have the to, things. You accept. They don't have yes, to. Yes, I have accepted. But they do not have to accept. It, eventually, they will accept. If not in this lifetime, next lifetime. Because if, and it, it said, Prabhupada said, if you become a pure devotee, uh, a hundred generations, the future and, and past will also become Krishna conscious. So your family, by you becoming Krishna conscious, don't worry, your family will all become great devotees. But I predict that as we progress with this, uh, this, um, this uh, league for 10,000 years of golden Israkali, your family will come on board as well. All right, and we have six token, minutes. Then you can let's, say we agree. We agree to disagree. We, we, let's try to wrap it up in six minutes. Uh, five minutes. We have five minutes. Ten o'clock. We're going to close it up. Okay. Who wants to? We haven't heard from Ananda. And Ananda Prabhu is, I think, uh, East Coast. It's uh, 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock there. So he might be. No, Ananda is in Houston. He's in uh, Texas. Ah, acha, acha. Two hours. Let, let, me, let me ask this last question. Uh, right, it's right. around the same fish topic here. So I uh, just wanted to know, uh, Prabhuji, uh, 
uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, before he got into the Krishna consciousness, he had a pharmacy that he used to take care of. And he had a very normal life like all of us, right? So that time, did he uh, have uh, non-witch food? And did he live, you know, what was it? Uh, like a, was, it, was he following Just like us, I a, mean, committing all the mistakes normal. and things like that. Life before he got into Krishna yeah. consciousness. Yes. His, well, he didn't get into Krishna. He was raised as a devotee. His father was a devotee also yes, from a high yeah. energy in the Malik group, and he, he and his sister used to play with a little Rathiatra car when they were babies and were children. So Prabhupada was asked once, uh, when did you first understand that Krishna existed? And he said that there was never a time when I did not see Krishna. So we know that he was a pure devotee from before his birth, and he came here to deliver us. It, you know, his pastime of being a householder, wife, kids, that was just like an exercise. Lord Chaitanya did the same thing twice. Lord Chaitanya got married twice. And the second wife, his first wife died from a snake bite, I think, and the second wife, he left and took sannyas just to demonstrate that one can do that. Uh, but did it mean that Lord Chaitanya was full of lust for a wife? No. These were just ways of expressing and showing and demonstrating who can become a devotee. So when Prabhupada was disguised as a householder, he had two pharmacies and they were big also. They weren't just, they were manufacturing pharmacies. He was becoming quite wealthy. And uh, when then some person he had working with him either embezzled or mismanaged and lost both pharmacies. But because he was raising all that money from the pharmacy in order to preach in the West. That's his only reason for doing it. Then he lost everything before wow. he could do that. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, so you're anxious to get off the line. Two minutes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm on. Uh, you know, we're not going to extend it any longer. <laughs> uh, why? But, but it's been but very fruitful, very interactive, more. very nice. Yeah, I mean, you know. Oh, by the way, there is one thing I'd like to mention. Uh, I did, did you get that uh, paper that I emailed you called The Glorious of Wearing Tilak? No, Prabhuji. No? So, okay, but anyhow. You send it to me, I'll send it to everyone else. How about that? Yeah, yeah. But it, it, I would recommend a request and nobody else to follow my suggestion that we all wear tilak on the zoom sounds good Jai. does that sound good yeah yes. very simple nice and yeah. Shreya also can wear tilak but we don't know what she looks like wearing tilak i'm lost i don't know what that is <laughs> tilak is the clay for the forehead oh tilak you're talking about okay got it <laughs> got it so right, will so. we ever will we ever get to see you Shreya? or are you going to always be this amazing Shastric voice coming from outer space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll end it here, Prabhu. Thank you very much for joining. Anyone who's watching online, please join us next time. Our next session would be on Saturday. We're going to start about 7.30. We're going to try 7.30, but officially, hopefully 8 o'clock we'll start. And then we'll go up till 10 o'clock. And if possible, 10. wearing T-lock. Uh, yes, that also. Jai. Mahaprabhu reached home to say goodbye. Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Manu, I made it so, home safely. Your heart is so great and powerful, Manu, that when you're present, we all wake up and start talking about higher things. Who are you talking Hare about? Jai. Thank you. Hare 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 Mahaprabhu Hare. is the source of inspiration for Hare me. Hare Krishna. Jai. He vibrates. He doesn't have any of the history, thank God. He has only the <laughs> transcendental heart and the transcendental experience and the feels the vibration of Krishna. Therefore, he is further along than we are in many, many ways. Hari Bol. Hari Krishna.